Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his free bird bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the troll Right, welcome to episode 65 of the Tech Bytes audio cast. It's the 2nd of November 2011 and this is a very special episode because it's a, the very last episode of Tech Bytes for season 1. I say season 1 because Tech Bytes has proudly now been running for a year and it's one of the few projects which I've been doing along with my blog, which I thoroughly enjoy doing from beginning to end. So, uh, I don't know, Roy, if uh, you're there, if you've got any comments you'd like to make on the on the show over the last year? Yeah, well, I, I wrote a couple of blog posts about it. Uh, actually, on the at the end of the day, I just realized, oh, it's the 1st of November, it must be something special. And then I just realized, oh, yeah, it's been a year since we uh, did episode, I think, one. Because I believe the first one was the kind of, we called it a pilot, we numbered it zero. Mm. Uh, so basically we kind of say, well, let's run it and get, get some feedback on it before we officially do like the first thing. Um, and that was in, I think the first one then was in November uh, 2010. Uh, and, and, and for those who are just listening to the show and they don't know the story, uh, I think it was in around the beginning of October. Uh, when we spoke about doing the show, and then we started to investigate how to do that, and then we weren't too good at first, but we were reasonably okay. We know that we knew the software. We tested a few things. Uh, it was the same when we tried to do videos. It, it takes quite a bit of research to really know how to do it right, because everything you get wrong, you might have to redo things. Uh, but ever since the first episode, I think you'll agree with me, we never had to redo things. We never had to really remove a section or a uh, or a thing, or like, you know, a sneeze or something. It's it's po- it's mostly, you know, once we start, uh, once we get the introduction and everything going, it's it's just, you know, it's just the, the whole thing is, is just going to be uh, published. So, yeah, it's, and, and I really, really enjoyed it. I, I really look forward to any of the shows. That what I like about it is we can actually yeah, put a lot of data, put lots of information. We don't have to do typo check, and we don't have to do... Uh, uh, argumentations, we don't have to tolerate things like trolls and comments and things like that. We can just have a conversation. Sometimes with a person doesn't agree with us, but it's a bit like having a conversation with a person. And we can go through a lot of material uh, and we can digest it even easily. I mean, I can put it on my uh, uh, my portable music player and just, just kind of walk around with it and listen to what happened yesterday uh, if, we, if we wish to do so. Uh, whereas, you know, with text, you have all the limitations of actually having to have a screen in front of you. So, so that that's been a thoroughly uh, enjoying experience, as you put it. Well, it's it, it, it has been rather rather strange experience in that nothing has been scripted before we started. I would have wanted the entire show to be scripted, planned out to to the nearest second, so that it, it gave some order and it gave me a little bit of confidence in in doing the show. And then when we start recording, we found that really it was it was more of a just general discussion which worked better we'd have some vague topics which we'd be covering but the conversation could go in any direction and we would never plan in which direction it would go the one nice thing uh, and this isn't particularly an insider secret but uh, i was never rumbled over the last year for my uh, disappearance from the desktop uh, during the show when we have other guests on like when rusty's here or we have a, a guest on there's times when i'll send a private message within uh, Skype and uh, I'll say something like I'm off for a few minutes and I'll put the microphone down very very quietly and I'll go and creep off for about 10-15 minutes and then come back on. I think I was almost rumbled in the chat room once when somebody mentioned in tech rights that uh, I was very quiet during an episode and that was probably because I was away from the desktop. I often get called down by my wife or uh, have another job to do uh, elsewhere so I have to disappear for a few minutes. So it's uh, nice that we managed to pull that one off on a effectively live audio cast because uh, like Roy says we don't edit or modify anything so um, no it's, it's been very good I've thoroughly enjoyed it there's a few changes coming and uh, myself Roy and Rusty have discussed them very briefly but I think we've taken on board a lot of the criticism and a lot of the comments of the people who are kind enough to give their time to listen to it and hopefully in the coming year of uh, Tech Bytes there'll be something uh, something a little bit different a little bit special um, so without further ado, 
we'll crack on with our topics for tonight. And today's going to be a, a, a slightly shorter show. Um, we're going to be looking at um, some comments by Mark Shuttleworth. We'll talk about a little bit about Unity. Apple and Microsoft are also going to figure in our conversations uh, along with patent deals. We're going to be talking about KDE uh, and we're going to be looking at uh, Diaspora and Facebook uh, and any other topic that sort of uh, stems from that. So, uh, Roy, I'll... Yeah, cool, yeah, I suppose we could actually see something about Identica at the end as well. Uh, have you been using it recently, just in general? I know we, we should be uh, mentioning this later, but I mean, recently they had loads of issues. And I think it was only around today in the afternoon that they kind of fixed the uh, access using certain APIs. Well, so the service was actually usable again. <laughs> you could actually well, access and do things. I mean, we, we might as well start with Identica. Um, I, I've had a few issues with it recently, uh, issues posting and uh, a, a few server issues where the, the system is informing that uh, post has been uh, sent, but it hasn't shown up on my stream. Yeah. But... I think that's just another nail in the coffin for me as far as microblogging is concerned because once you experience something like Diaspora, and bearing in mind I, th I come from a background that hasn't used Facebook and never jumped on the bandwagon with that type of social networking, uh, when I discovered uh, Diaspora and got into the, the whole uh, community there, I found that microblogging was just far too restrictive. And yes, it's very good for the, for the short posts, but having a conversation is very difficult. There's misunderstandings abound because you can't spend enough time to explain what you're trying to say. So uh, I'm shifting more towards Diaspora solely anyway. Um, I'm sort of torn at the moment with Google Plus as well because I have a lot of people that I chat with on Google Plus. I'm hoping that uh, they would come over to Diaspora. But uh, so at the moment I'm trying to juggle both of them. And what Google Plus gets really is just a mirror image of what I've been talking about on Diaspora. So, but going back to Identica, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not the fault of Identica itself. Um, I think it's microblogging in general. It's the same with Twitter. I haven't yeah. really touched I, I Twitter. I think it, seem, it feels like there is less activity in general. I mean, people who might follow write about Linux and open source and things like that. Now, it's hard to say if the symptom here is something to do with open source and Linux and people who might follow, or maybe it's actually to do with Twitter as a whole. Maybe people still post things, uh, but don't communicate, don't engage as much, don't have conversations as much as they used to. Because I can tell you for sure, last year I saw a lot more uh, conversations emerging and more action in, in, in Twitter. And now it just feels like uh, loads of people are, who used to be very active, they no longer post anything new. You know, they're still a kind of subscribed to you, mm. but they're just not exactly there. Uh, that how you, that's exactly what happened with Dig. I have like 2,700 something followers in Dig. Uh, and all of them, you know, they used to be active members and people who were, I would speak to, and almost none of them is still there. You know, everyone's moved on to something else. So although the accounts are still there, although the site is still very big and has loads of pages in it, I'm not sure if, if, if the same number of people is, are actually involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, India, and I have always, I think I told you this in previous shows, I mean, moving from GeoCities to MySpace to uh, things like the, uh, uh, what's it called, the, my, the, the journal one. Uh, one of the one of the early blogging platforms moved into personal blogs and then like Twitter and and now there is like Facebook and Google Plus and things. There is always this evolution of things that were kind of a certain paradigm gets older and then there is something new at the block. And mm -hmm. I think the newer thing now is things like Google Plus and uh, and Diaspora, as you say. I mean, I I see loads of people who I used to uh, subscribe to, uh, subscribe to. Used to, they used to subscribe to my uh, account in, in Identica, and they tell me, oh, I've just moved in from uh, to Diaspora. So it seems that quite a few people are basically migrating from one to another, based mm. on who's there, because they look for certain people to subscribe to and to follow. I mean, I, th I think at least the scope for Diaspora is is far better. I I, I talk about your posts here, Roy, because you've recently joined Diaspora um, after much nagging from myself and I believe a friend of yours that was. Uh, yeah. That encourages you to come on. But the nice thing about it is if you want to post a two-line link like you would in Identica, fine, that, that, and that's no problem. But if you want to add a few comments, you've then, then got the scope for a, a paragraph of text. Uh, I found there was a lot of links that I would like to include in Identica that were quite... I was being sarcastic when I was including them, but I couldn't convey that sarcasm in the character limit of yeah. Identica, so I just leave them off in case for fear of misunderstanding. So, but in Diaspora, it's a completely different scenario. And also, you've got all the fun little things as well where people post the videos, and I know yeah, Identica now... Yes, is a very nice way of trying to mesh things up with the videos and images. Uh, it's a bit like a wall functionality, I suppose, mm -hmm. in Facebook. But the nice thing about it, I used to go to uh, Reddit. Uh, I don't use Reddit for anything except for the funny section, which basically have humorous pictures and stuff. 
But the thing is about the ask right? If you subscribe to the right people, you can get loads of very funny pictures on the same page. All you have to do is scroll down. You don't have to click anything because it kind of does the scrolling, the continuous scrolling once you get to the bottom. And you can get loads of funny pictures. In